If you're just joining us, we are in Annapolis, Maryland with Chesapeake Lightcraft and we are building a double outrigger sailing paddling canoe that they designed. In the last video, we started building the hull, we set up the mold, and then we strip planked the hull with western red cedar. Then we sanded it all down and we fared it and we got it nice and fair. In this video, we'll continue building the main hull and we'll pull it off the mold and then we'll continue and build some of the other components for the outrigger canoe. The first step for today is to install the shear panel. This shear panel is made out of beautiful sapile marine plywood. This plywood, just like any other plywood, comes in 4x8 sheets, so in order to get the 20 foot long shear panel, we had to glue multiple pieces together in length. CLC cut the multiple pieces out on their CNC machine, and they included puzzle joints in these pieces, which you saw us glue together in the last video. CLC uses these puzzle joints in a lot of their kits, and they're pretty cool because just like puzzles, they only go together one way. So if you order a kit from CLC, it might have multiple pieces with different puzzle joints, but the way that they make these puzzle joints and cut them out, the pieces can only fit together in the proper way, and the joints will not match up any other way. So it basically just makes it really hard to mess up and it allows more people to be able to build their kits. So we mounted the 20 foot long shear panels temporarily just to trace out what needed to be cut further from the boat so the shear panels fits in flush on either end. And then when everything was trimmed and planed down properly, we mixed some thickened epoxy and we mounted the shear panels permanently. spring clamps and brass brads to secure the shear panel until the thickened epoxy cured. Once we finished the first side, we moved on to the other side. Once the shear panels were installed, our next step was to install the outer stems. These outer stems are made up of multiple thin layers of wood glued together by thickened epoxy. This makes it easier to bend around the tight curve of the bow and stern of the boat. I have to give a huge shout out and thanks to Total Boat for supplying us with a ton of epoxy for this project, along with a bunch of other supplies and materials. You could check out what Total Boat has to offer through our link in the description below. Our first outer stem on the bow went on super smooth. And our stern outer stem did not. But we just did it again and the second one went on super smooth. Once the outer stems were cured, they got roughly shaped, and then we did one last quick longboard sand before... Once we removed the canoe from the mold, it was time to start making the deck. First, we temporarily mounted the frames for the deck mold, and we taped off all the surfaces that the deck would be built on so that it wouldn't permanently stick to them. Then we started strip planking the deck the same way that we did the hull of the boat.
finished stripping the deck. As soon as the final glue dries, we will pull all the staples out, we'll sand that down, and we'll fiberglass at least the top side of the deck. because the broken staples are going to be sticking out like an eighth of an inch and we'll, we'll light you up. After we laid up the top side of the deck, we turned our attention back to the main hull. We'll lay up the bottom side of the deck when our friend Joey gets here and we have a little something special planned for that. But for now, we're going to do our best to clean up the inside of the hull. First, we have to pull out any stray staples that broke when we pulled them out initially. Then we planed some high spots and scraped any big clumps of dried glue on the inside. Then we sanded. And sanded. And sanded. Send it by hand. Alright, we got a lot going on all at once in here. Steve and I are doing some fillets. We're using the Total Boat Thixo. Really easy so we don't have to uh, mix anything. It just mixes in the tip and we're just spreading it out right in the stem there. Dylan's doing some fairing over here, just on the outside. And Cody is doing a hot coat on the deck. done just about everything we're going to do on the inside of the canoe for now. We're going to flip it back over onto the mold and complete fairing the outside and getting everything we have to get done on the outside of the hole before our friend Joey comes on Monday and helps us vacuum bag the whole thing.
So we're about to build the laminate the akas or the beams, whatever you want to call them, right? Uh, the akas, yes. So they're they're gonna fold. So we're gonna do this part. Got to make four of them. So that's what we're gonna end up with. All right. So they cut out these molds with like particle board, and then we're just gonna epoxy and laminate this spruce, right? Yep, I think it's spruce. We're epoxy these and then clamp them around this mold here. A bunch of layers, what, like 15 you said? 22 all together, uh, 15 of the logs, and then some shorter ones for the thicker part of the top. We don't need to run it all the way out to the end. Ready? So you can try to brush this and you can try to roll this. But you can't do it faster than this. Without much trouble, we'll do a second we'll do another one too. Nothing bad can happen now. We're taking the, the beams that we cross beams or the what are they called akas traditional term laminated the other day. So add like 30 something hours to cure. We're gonna take them out of this off this mold and see what they look like. And then we'll have to cut the shape out from this still. they cut out in the CNC machine and eventually we'll line it up, trace it, and then cut this piece out of this piece and that'll be one of four of our cross beams, but one section of it. Each of the four Akka components got traced to the template and then got cut out on a bandsaw and the pivoting hole drilled as well. From there, four channels got routed into each arm, and we laminated in a bunch of unidirectional carbon fiber to increase the stiffness and strength of these arms. Finally, each arm got capped with a fresh piece of Sitka spruce on the top and bottom, 
and then trimmed, routed, and sanded to their final shape. They are now ready for finishing.